there for this special edition of Talking Europe. We have brought you to one of the smallest EU member states, tiny landlocked Luxembourg. Now, this country covers just about 2,500 square kilometres. That means you could fit 200 Luxembourgs into mainland France. And its population numbers just about 600,000 people. Luxembourg is also the wealthiest EU member state. But when the coronavirus pandemic swept into the continent, Luxembourg found itself in a bind, literally. Borders closing across Europe, a particular concern. Now, that's in large part because almost half of Luxembourg's workforce actually lives in other European states. What's more, while this country produces more than it needs in beef and milk, it imports almost all of its fruit and vegetables. Well, in this programme, we're going to be finding out what lessons have been learned, specifically on that issue of food supplies, and not just for Luxembourg, but for the wider EU as well. We are now at Rolingen in the north of Luxembourg. As you can see behind me, we have a field of cows. Uh, this farm farming limousin cattle for beef, uh, the biggest uh, agricultural uh, product in Luxembourg. Uh, I'm here in the company of Luxembourg's agriculture minister, Romain Schneider. Thank you for being our guest. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet, nice you. meet you. So I just want to start off before we come to farming with the pandemic. The World Health Organization, of course, warned back in February uh, that this was a threat to Europe. Um, but Luxembourg, like its European neighbours, didn't act until the beginning or even middle of March. Uh, with hindsight, uh, could, should your country have locked down sooner? No, I think we have reacted uh, very quickly. Uh, even in December, uh, when we saw the first uh, numbers coming from China, we directly uh, made a uh, salute decrease to monitoring uh, this situation and looking also on the on different numbers were really decreasing. I think we have reacted very good and I hope that we will not have a second, uh, second well end of, uh, of cases. Just on the issue of uh, borders, Luxembourg, this landlocked country in the centre of Europe, it very much depends on European cooperation on that. Why weren't these border closures more coordinated? That it was a problem, but for Luxembourg it was a more little problem than for other countries. It was very important that we have the borders open, knowing that a percent of our agriculture area are on another country. And there, I must say, that personal contacts with my mm. with my my colleagues in Germany, in France, and also in Belgium allowed us to do that. And it was very important also for the farmers to go to their farm and also to work during the COVID crisis. Well, our reporter Luke Brown uh, has been out and about in Luxembourg. He's met some farmers who've been in exactly that situation uh, with parts of their farm in a foreign country on the other side of a border. Take a look at his report. Ici, plus ou moins ici, il y avait une, une barrière en métal. Et de l'autre côté, la même chose. Et au milieu, il y avait des, des blocs en béton. Impossible de, de passer. The morning of March 16th was a shock for Robbie Linkles. This bridge marks the frontier with Germany, and it was closed. He has fields in Germany and sometimes crosses this border five times a day. That daily routine suddenly vulnerable to Europe's response to COVID-19. On parle toujours d'un Europe unie, et de tout d'un coup, d'un jour à l'autre, on, on ferme les, bar, les, les frontières. Ça, ça je comprends pas. Et un, un virus, on ne s'arrête pas ici à la frontière. Robbie had bought land in Germany because it's cheaper than in Luxembourg. But the closure doubled his journey time. For the dozens of farmers like Robbie who have land on both sides, it was a brutal shock. J'étais un peu euh, comme en prison. Euh, J'étais fermé dans, dans mon pays un peu. Robbie's detour could have been even further. The German authorities initially closed all crossings into northern Luxembourg. In the end, two were opened, but staffed by Luxembourgish customs officers. That compromise coming after pressure from mayors on both sides, including Romain Vester, the mayor of Hosigen. Notre population avait peur que tout ce qu'on a vécu les dernières 75 ans était stoppé avec le commencement de la fermeture des frontières. On doit trouver des solutions au niveau européen. On ne peut pas faire ça sous comme on dit ici au Luxembourg. Sinon, on ne va pas. Uh, sortir de cette crise qui était une, une crise au niveau uh, sanitaire, mais maintenant on a une crise économique. 
The Luxembourg state has been forced to help the country's 2,000 farms, providing nearly 10 million euros for the sector. That's welcome news on the other side of the country, on the Belgian border, where it's asparagus season, one of Luxembourg's few significant vegetable crops. Luke Hoffman has long relied on workers from Eastern Europe. COVID-19 halted Europe's freedom of movement, but the harvest still needed picking. Mais dans leur absence, nous, on a, on a récolté aussi. Voilà, le travail devait être fait. Nous, on n'a pas l'habitude de compter nos heures. The team of Romanians did finally make it to Luxembourg in May. Special documents from the farm proving their journey was necessary. Au fost problemă la vama, cu hurtire, cu... Ne-au refuzat prima dată, dar nu ne-am descurajat și am încercat a doua oară. Și am reușit și am venit. Workers and food. Luxembourg relies on the outside world for both. The sudden isolation caused by the pandemic hammering home that point. Tout le monde au Luxembourg a bien compris que sans l'étranger, ça ne marche pas. Quand on va dans le magasin et on regarde dans les rayons, euh, combien de produits viennent de Luxembourg? The border closures hit sales too, especially of wine. Van de Moselle is the country's largest wine cooperative, but turnover is down 25% since the lockdown. After all, 200,000 people usually cross the border each day for work and shopping, representing a third of Luxembourg's population. On sait que c'est une année compliquée et ce sera quasiment impossible de rattraper le retard, le retard qu'on a eu les, les deux mois, les deux mois et demi où tout a été fermé. The local wine is called Spirit of Schengen, after the Luxembourgish town where Europe's Freedom of Movement Treaty was born. Oui, on est Français, Allemands, Luxembourgeois, mais en fait, on était Européens, on était était un, un ensemble. Là, on s'est rendu compte combien on a, en fait, on chérit cette liberté euh, que tout d'un coup, on avait perdue. Et on est heureux de la retrouver maintenant. The border closures left a bitter taste in the mouth for Luxembourg's farmers, now more aware than ever of their landlocked life at the heart of Europe. Well, just coming back to a Luxembourgish agriculture minister, Romain Schneider. The pandemic showed up uh, some issues with uh, food security. Luxembourg imports two thirds of its eggs, 95% of vegetables, and almost 100% of its fruits. Um, it's clearly vulnerable to border closure and supply chain issues. Uh, is your government working on measures to have more food produced locally to improve food security? We have a Be Organic Plan 2025, who give us the possibility to have more areas uh, cultivating in an organic manner. Mm. So I think uh, there will be the focus made also on producing vegetables. Uh, on the other side, I think we have taken a lot of measures to help startups start up enterprises in agriculture. Some years ago, we, we started by producing asparagus here in Luxembourg. I think it's a very, very big success on that. And I think a lot of other producers will follow that so that we also can diversify our agriculture. And that I think it will be very important also for the next year. And looking to the European level, uh, the European Union uh, set to start a new common agricultural policy uh, in just over a year's time. Uh, are you working to change those policy plans in light of those lessons that you've learned from the pandemic about food security, about supply chains? I think we have not to change, we have to fortify. I think it must be more sustainable. Luxembourg is involved in that, Luxembourg is working on national ground on that, and also on the European way, we are supporting that. But we are also saying we cannot do everything on that if we have not enough money, enough budget to do it. So I think the point, and I always said it in the Council, if you have these very great challenges for our agriculture, for our farmers, we need also the money. Roman Schneider, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, let's look further afield now to Spain. Farmers there, of course, had their problems. They've been talking to our correspondent, Anaïs Gerard, about the issues they had keeping food on our tables and on their own. Every day, Emilio Moreno looks after his herd of sheep. Yeah. Yeah. The coronavirus pandemic didn't change his daily routine. However, it has dealt him a heavy economic blow. With restaurants closed, the price of lamb, a luxury meat in normal times, has plunged. Like many other businesses in the sector, 
this meat processing plant is struggling to stay afloat amid falling demand. El ganadero está perdiendo dinero, nosotros también. Al final es que esto es una ruina si no si no recibimos ayudas de de la Unión Europea. Que todo lo que producimos no lo no lo llegamos a vender y hay que congelarlo. With sales of fresh meat falling, much of the produce has been frozen, a move that reduces its value. It's also a way for this company to keep its employees working. The firm is hoping the EU's private storage aid will make up for the losses. Sí, yo creo que va a ser nuestro nuestra salvación. Que no tenemos dinero para poder pagar al ganadero. Further south, in the province of Jaén, olive groves stretch as far as the eye can see. 20% of olive oil in the world is produced in this region. Super fresco, ¿verdad? Muy aromático, muy herbáceo. Francisco Vano runs one of the oldest olive farms in the region. On the day we farmed, he had a meeting with Vincent Giraud, a wholesale dealer. Hemos bajado las ventas eh, desde 15 de marzo hasta final de abril de un 85%. Nosotros dedicado 100% a hostelería, mm -hmm. desde luego ha sido una crisis nunca sí. vista. Pero en cambio se ha incrementado mucho la línea de eh, la venta online de aceite de oliva. With the domestic market in collapse, Vano's company turned to the export market. He says there's a lack of coordination at the European level. Una vez más fallamos en tener bases y, y normativas comunes que sean aplicables en todos los países de la Unión. Eh, España ha tenido un sistema de gestión distinto al que ha tenido Francia o distinto al que ha tenido, por ejemplo, Bélgica. ¿no? Finally out of lockdown, Vano is looking towards the future. Delayed reforms to the EU's Common Agricultural Policy, or CAP, are coming into effect in 2023. He's already shifted towards sustainable farming. No aplicamos herbicidas, pues lo que estamos haciendo es desbrozando. His investment is starting to pay off. 15% of the farm's revenue comes from CAP subsidies. Que Europa es la gran locomotora que puede tirar adelante de esos objetivos de desarrollo sostenible. Los recursos con los que Europa va a dotar a la política agraria común deben incrementarse y no disminuir como hasta ahora se está planteando. Last year, the EU's CAP budget was cut by 5% to allow for increased spending in other areas, such as defence. Europe has added 16 billion euros to its coronavirus recovery plan, but farmers say there's still not enough help for the sector. Now, because of the coronavirus travel restrictions, we've had to record this part of our programme from our studio in Paris. Now, the European Commission is, of course, the body that comes up with farm policy and subsidies for Europe to get a broader overview on how the European Commission is taking on board the challenges of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm joined from Brussels by Agriculture Commissioner Janusz Wojcikowski. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, first question, in our reporting in Luxembourg, we've seen how farmers and supply chains have been disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Has the Commission learned lessons for the future? Uh, we, we should pay more attention to the development of the local market, the cooperation with farmers, uh, local processing industry, local markets, because the the problem with transport was the, the most serious problem in this crisis. We transport a lot of food uh, across Europe and uh, more sustainable agriculture will be more resilient. Uh, the European Commission has uh, produced its uh, farm to fork strategy, looking at uh, more sustainable measures, uh, local production. However, there are fears from European agriculture ministers uh, that this uh, strategy could see Europe facing a, a glut of cheap imports of agri-food uh, products from outside the EU, which would actually uh, create uh, competition problems for EU farmers. Are you confident that you can protect EU farmers from this? The farm to fork strategy and also the biodiversity strategy, this is the big chance for the European agriculture, especially for the small um, and medium size farmers, family farmers. We will support more for the sustainable uh, agriculture, sustainable farming, sustainable production, about the import. 
we will also promote uh, the sustainable production in our trade agreements. Uh, we will require the same standards from the from the uh, importers. And just looking at, to the future of the common agricultural policy more broadly, uh, the actual size of the budget, how much money will go on this? Uh, there's a proposal from the Commission for around one third of the overall uh, EU budget to go on CAP. But the European Parliament wants more money. The Prime Minister of your country, Poland, wants a bigger proportion to go on CAP. Uh, considering that there are big demands in terms of green commitments, recovering from the pandemic, do you agree with them? The new proposal, 26 and a half billion more than before, especially for the rural development, uh, uh, for the second pillar, for the rural development, uh, will be very, uh, this is a very good uh, message for the farmers and uh, uh, we in our possibility of effective action, effective support to them. Uh, I, I think that that it is the, the good response for the for the situation in in, in farming. I, I hope that the member states, that all member states, will uh, will uh, approve this this new uh, proposal much better for our farmers. All right, Janusz Wojcikowski. That's all we've got time for. Thank you very much for your time. Well, do stay with us for part two of the programme. We are back in Luxembourg and we're going to be meeting some people who want to see a drastic change of thinking in European farming to make it stand up better to global shocks and crises. Hope to see you in a couple of minutes' time. The world is ever-changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what. France 24, with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité.